Topography is the art of arranging type. And most people don't realize it. They don't even think about it. But the type of font that you choose has a profound effect on your brand. This is tutorial number eight, fonts. Hi, I'm Candace. Welcome to Websites Made Easy with Candace. The tutorials in this series are based on my book, I Need a Website, What Do I Do Now? If you'd like to follow along, you can purchase my book on Amazon.com. Now, it's unlikely that you've been on a website and thought, wow, I really like that font. I mean, I do that, but most people don't. We're just not trained to see type that way. But marketers are using type just like color to get your attention. And I know you've probably been on some websites where you might not be looking for a particular font, but the fonts were too generic or too boring or they didn't seem to fit or worse, they're unreadable. You need to choose the right font for your business that will attract your target audience. It's important to choose the right font to get your message across to your target audience. It will deliver your brand message and communicate not only your name, but your personality. It will evoke interest and add to the design of your website. It must be readable and it's got to be industry specific. It's got to relate to your target audience and it must be positive. Choose the wrong font and you don't connect and you will lose your audience. Take a look at these two companies. Highlights Kids is a magazine for children and Berkshire Hathaway is a company that deals with financial institutions. What if Highlights Magazine chose a font that was a professional font? instead of a playful, fun font. Or Berkshire Hathaway chose the same font that Highlights used. It doesn't really make you feel that they're a serious company. Would you want to give them your money? I don't think so. Subconsciously, you want it to look more professional. And for children, you want their magazine to have a font that shows that it's fun. Look at these font choices. Every company uses fonts that identify with their target audience. There are five categories of fonts. Serif, sans serif, script, decorative, and modern. Serif is one of the oldest typefaces. It has details which are small lines attached to the ends of the letters. These are called flags or tags. Take a look at some of the companies that use serif fonts. It is a more formal font and all of these companies are trying to evoke trustworthiness and reliability and professionalism. It is bold, but it can feel old-fashioned and lackluster, which is perfect if your target audience wants to feel that you are traditional and dependable. It's used by newspapers and financial institutions, insurance companies, and universities. Notice the difference in the two Google fonts. In 1998, Google chose a serif font, which they used until 2015, when they chose a sans serif typeface to make it look a lot more modern and playful, less institutional. 
and you can really tell the difference. One is definitely more fun. Here are some examples of serif fonts. You can see all of them have the little flags on the ends of the letters. A lot of older, well-established companies use serif fonts. Sans serif. Sans means without in French. The letters don't have tags or flags attached. The font is clean and modern and easy to read. It's very straightforward and contemporary. Sans serif is popular with digital design companies and it's often used as a headline when serif is used as the text. You can take a look at these companies and see they all want to project that they are more modern, that they're more contemporary. Here are examples of sans serif fonts. They're clean, easy to read, very contemporary. Script fonts mimic handwriting and tend to be more personal. They're creative, casual, and have a carefree quality. Script fonts can be hand-drawn, and sometimes a script can be difficult to read, so it's important that you choose one that's readable. It's also often used by artistic companies. There is a wide variety of script fonts available. As you can see here, they're so different. There's so many different styles and new ones come out every single day. So if you're a creative company and you want to reach your target audience by being more personal, then a script font might be your choice. Decorative or display fonts. This type of font gets attention. It's big and bold and unusual and meant to be noticed. Entertainment companies love it for the impact that it generates. Never used in text, always used in logos and headings. Here are some examples of decorative display fonts. And they're really fun to look up. There's so many different designs and styles. If you want to get attention, display fonts will do that for you. And finally, modern fonts. Modern fonts are trendy and eye-catching. It's a favorite of tech companies because it has a futuristic appearance. It's not for everybody and sometimes it's kind of hard to read. Look at some of these companies. Modern fonts are really cool. They're exciting. They need to be readable. Take a look at some of these modern fonts. If you look on the far right hand side, Willa Militia is really cool to look at, but it's kind of hard to read. Still, they're very creative, and memorable. So how do you choose your fonts? First of all, you need to know your target audience and what appeals to them. Different fonts appeal to different audiences. Teens like decorative and display fonts, while older adults like serif and sans serif. And women tend to like script. And then what is the personality of your target audience? Are they witty or serious? Are they realistic or playful? Children are playful, while adults might be more serious. Does the font match your message? Does it support your brand? If your brand is creative, you don't want to use a formal font that's very traditional. And if your brand depicts traditional concepts, you certainly don't want to use a fun font. And last but not least, it's got to be readable. You are trying to communicate clearly. And if the font is too complex, it's going to confuse the viewer. Here are some examples of fonts and the emotions that they elicit. Charlie's Seafood Shack is fun, lively, and a little retro. 
The font used here is lobster. Anna's fashion designs. Sophisticated, refined, and elegant. This font is Alex Brush. Tech Studios. Contemporary, clean, fresh. And in the color gray, because it's neutral. This font is Anton. Spa Splendor. Calming, relaxed. Of course, it's in green. And the font is Allura. Kids Corner. It is fun and childlike. Children prefer yellow over all other colors. This font is called Sniglet. And of course, I added amazing websites. It's creative. It's a hand-brushed font. Very creative, artistic, and personal. This font is called Rofi Taste. There are thousands of fonts out there, and many of those fonts are free, but not all of them. I thought my font was free. My font is Rofi Taste, and I love that font. It is perfect for my business. It's artistic, it's creative. I was so pleased when I found it. But it wasn't until after I trademarked my name that I realized that font is free for personal use and demos. It's not free commercially. So I had to buy the font. And I don't regret buying the font. I would have still chosen it today. It's perfect for my brand. But I would have much preferred to have gotten it for free. So read the fine print. We're going to review three good sources online for free fonts. They are Font Squirrel, Google Fonts, and 1001 Fonts. So let's go to Font Squirrel and check out the home page. You can see there are a lot of fonts that they put on that home page that are available. Hundreds of fonts. Go up to the top and take a look at HOTS. These are the hottest free fonts that are available today. And these really are very popular for 2020. Roboto, Lotta, Railways, very popular. So here's Lobster, I love Lobster. Go over to Download OTF, you click on that, it downloads. You open your download. Now I have an Apple. Every computer is a little bit different. So I'm gonna download Lobster, I'm gonna open up the folder, double click on the A, it goes right there. Do I want it regular? Do I want another size? And install the font. And that's all you have to do, it's done. Let's say you're looking at these fonts and you really like milkshake. You notice that that arrow is a little bit different. It's off-site, which means it'll probably cost you. Um, download on that one. And it takes you to another site. Now, this is free, so you can add it to your cart. But when you go to check out, even though it doesn't cost you any money, they're going to ask for your credit card information for the future. So if you don't want to do that, then go back and, uh, and look for another font that may be similar. Uh, let's say you see a font that you really like and you take a picture of it and then you can upload that image and they'll find out what the font type is. And the good thing is they'll tell you what's close to it too. So a font that's similar. So let's move on to Google Fonts. All of Google Fonts are free. Now you look at this homepage, it's a little bit different. Type in the name of our company, it's Joanne's Antiques. Uh, go over to the categories and I don't really want something that's display. I want something that's serif. It's a more old fashioned, it's more in line, maybe handwriting, uh, but it's a more old fashioned. So they'll eliminate those and then give me um, all these different choices that I can make. Some are crazier than the others and you can go through those. Playfair is pretty good. So let's take a look at Playfair. And what's really good about Google Fonts is when you go into it, it'll show you what your name looks like in all the different styles of the font, whether it's bold or italic or black, which is really heavy bold. Um, and then they'll also tell you about the font itself, 
who the designer was, when it was designed, how it's used. It's got an open font license. That means it's free. It's an open source. You can use it for free. But what's really great too on Google Fonts is they'll tell you what popular pairings are with this particular font. And we're going to talk about that next. All fonts need to be paired. You want to have two fonts, maybe three. If you have a serif font, you want to put a non-serif with it because it complements it. If you want to have something that catches the attention, then you want the text to be easy to read and plain so it works well together. Another thing you can do is you can use the same font but use it in different styles. For example, you might have Joanne's Antiques in, in uh, italics in black and then you might have your text in regular. So let's take a look what they suggest. Um, they use this. Okay, so here's Playfair Display. And this is regular, and it's just not enough for me, not enough pop. So let's make it, um, let's make it bold. Okay, that pops it out. That's, we want to make a statement. So on the text, we can use, um, let's say, Roboto, and we can make it regular or maybe light. You see, and it'll show you how it looks. And maybe I don't like Roboto. Actually, it's a very popular font, but maybe I want to use Lotto. And you can see the difference there, or Railway. Railway has that W that's really characteristic. You always realize it. Open Sands is another one, very popular. Um, so, so you can play around with it. Maybe, maybe you want to use Open Sands, but maybe you want to make it a little bit lighter. You know, or maybe you think, ah, that's too light. Maybe we want to make it a little bit darker there. And maybe if we go back up to this, maybe we want to make it semi-bold. And then make our open sands, maybe we'll make it uh, light. You know, that has a nice contrast. So let's go back. And instead of Joanne's Antiques, let's go up here and say, no, we don't want that or that. We want... Big gym storage unit, so we want to have display. We want it to be really strong. We're going to make it uh, big gym storage. We want it to be display. We're looking through this. We want something strong. You're going to feel that it's going to protect your valuables. You know, it's like having a guard at your door. So you're going to use a font that says that. So here, let's take a look at Alpha Slab 1. It's just this one style, big and bold, right? You don't have it. You don't have that one in a light or a script. You have it in big, bold letters. So this is what we want. We come down, it tells you about it, who the designer is and the license. So here is our big, bold um, title. And then we have the text below. So they recommend with something like this, something that is not as heavy. So Roboto is very popular and they'll let you see what Roboto looks like. I wouldn't go with light or, or italic. It just doesn't go with it. I would stick with Roboto regular. Let's see what um, medium looks like. Medium's even better. It's a little bit darker than regular. Um, if you wanted to check out uh, Open Sands, so you could use it regular or semi-bold. That still gives it that punch. You see what I mean? That's what fonts do. If Joanne's Antique had this font, it wouldn't translate to the people that she wants to target. Now let's check out 1001 fonts. Here's their front page. Keep in mind, if you go off their page, always look, this is another company. And so is this. So if you put in your name or if you check over here, you're going to go off of 1001 fonts. So here we have Big Gym Storage. And, and these are new and fresh fonts that they've got. So that's a big one right there. So let's go here again. Hit Display. You want Display and you want it to be bold. And there's 69 pages. Uh, you could go through this one forever. Maybe we can take a look and see if they have the one that we just looked at, uh, Alpha Slab. 
and see if they have that font. There it is. There are categories. It'll give you all different things. Maybe you want to do something that's retro. Let's go back to Joanne's Antiques. So, Joanne's Antiques. So we want it to be retro. We want, look at all the styles. You got 22 pages that you can choose. What will your target audience like? There's so many possibilities. Let's say you've got a Mexican restaurant and you call it uh, Sunrise Tacos. Okay. And you want it to have a Mexican flair. So there you go, Sunrise Tacos. It'll give you, and there's only two pages of this one, but it'll give you, that's, that's kind of cool right there. And so maybe it's an Asian restaurant and you're going to, you're going to click on uh, Asian and you're going to name it Lotus um, Pad, the Lotus Pad, right? And so they'll give you that imitation that makes it seem Asian. There are so many ways that you can get help online. It's exciting. You can play with it for hours, as you know I did. Font combinations. Fonts need to harmonize. They need to work together. So how do you choose? It can be a challenge. There are a few basics you should keep in mind. Try to use only two fonts. The more fonts, the more confusing the page seems. Use fonts that complement one another. And the way to do this is to use super family fonts. Those are fonts that are in the same family. They have identical features and similar appearance. They've been designed to work together. It's perfect if you're looking to appeal to a very traditional conservative market. You can also use script and non-script fonts together, serif and non-serif, and you can alter the size, the boldness, and the lightness of the font. And finally, and this is most important, be consistent throughout the website. You want the same fonts on all the pages. You do not want to switch fonts on different pages. Be consistent, use the same two fonts throughout your website and all of your marketing materials as well. This is an example of Lachita family font. And you can see there are many variations. Each one of these types also has bold, light, and italic versions. This flyer uses super family fonts. On the left is Roboto, and on the right is Lucida. It works. It's very complimentary, and it gives it enough variation to still attract the viewer. Non-identical fonts contrast. They don't have identical features, but they still work well together. They usually consist of a serif font paired with a sans serif font. All of these examples here are serif on the left, sans serif on the right. You can use a bold serif font with a light sans serif font. And these combinations tend to be more creative. This is an example of several quotes paired with non-identical fonts. They seem more creative, more interesting. They work well together. When you're choosing your fonts, keep these rules in mind. Similar or contrast, super family or non-identical fonts that pair well together. Never conflict. To avoid conflict, use only two fonts. The more fonts, the more conflict. The good news is there's lots of help for you online. There are dozens of sites that will help you pair your fonts and they'll explain to you why they work well together. Keep in mind your target audience. If you're trying to appeal to someone in the contracting business, 
you want to use a bold font. And if you're trying to appeal someone in the hair salon business, you want probably to use a script. Decide what appeals to your target audience and what you like to. There's lots of combinations that will work. There's not just one that will work for you. So apply the basics that you've learned and you'll succeed. Hierarchy is a system we use to arrange type in such a way that we communicate information effectively. It's visual. It breaks up the dialogue so it's not all the same, which would be boring. And it allows the viewer to scan effectively. Viewers don't read, they scan. So you need to make it easy for them to get the most important information out of your website. And the other thing you have to remember is it's got to be consistent throughout your website design. You can't change one page from another. It's got to be the same, which makes it a whole lot easier for you too. The most important element in your font hierarchy is the header. It has the most impact. You wanna use fonts that are big and bold and attract the viewer's attention. What I used here is Cooper. Next is the subheader. It's the second most important font and it should support the header font. They are smaller than the header fonts but larger than the text fonts. The two fonts should pair well together. The name of this font is Patrick Han, and it's a good complement to Cooper. Finally, the body text. The body text contains the main content in easy to read fonts. It should not be smaller than 16 points. You need to keep it brief. No one reads long columns of text. Too many websites contain too much body text. Spacing is important. Empty space eliminates the clutter. It allows the page to breathe and gives the viewer a positive experience. Here are three examples of hierarchy. Drum circle is the header font. It is the most important font. It gets your attention. It's big and bold. It stands out. The subheader font is used in Siesta Key and Sarasota High School. It supports the header font. The body text is smaller. It is easier to read and contains the pertinent information. They all work well together. And lastly, everything has space around it. It's not cluttered. It allows the viewer to have a positive experience. Awards.com is a website that selects the best websites from all over the world. Check it out and see what others are doing. Here are some examples of good font hierarchy. Amsterdam Fairy Festival. One of the first things you'll notice about all of these web pages, it's not crowded. It's easy on the eyes. It's a pleasure to look at this particular website. Amsterdam Fairy Festival, of course, that is your header font. Amsterdam Fairy Festival and the logo is your secondary font. And then if you look at the menu, that's your body text. Chartopedia, be among the best. That's the first thing you notice. That is the header font. Chartopedia is the subheader. And then you see the text below. I see inside company. The header is solving brand's toughest challenges from inside out. The subheader is what's in white. The body text is beneath the header. Protest is a clothing company. This new collection, spring and summer, is the header. Underneath that is the subheader. And then if you look on the top where the menu is, that's your body text. Polygon, pretty straightforward. That's your header, studio and design, the subheaders. And then yet the words underneath, bring homes to life, bringing life to homes and architectural renders. Those are your body text. 
technology and design. Pretty straightforward, that is your header. Crafted with love is the subheader. And then the menu on the upper right hand side is your body text. And do keep in mind, there's not a lot of text on these award winning websites. People don't read text. So keep it short. It's so much more effective. So have fun finding the perfect font for your business. So many choices and so little time, but you'll be fine. Use the online sources that we discussed today. The next tutorial is content part one, text. You only have a few seconds to connect with your viewer once they get on your website. So your text has got to be engaging. And I'm going to show you how to do just that. So Lulu and I'll see you next time. Music